All right, the votes are tallied. The votes are in. And it was close. It was a close fight um, till the end. But the person who got the most votes for the team of the season review I was going to do is this Wijnaldum card, as you're going to see on your screen. But because it was such a close fight, I am going to do team of the season Bernardo. Why am I butchering his name? Team of the season Bernardo Silva next after this Wijnaldum review. But after that's open, let me know in the comment section down below. Who do you guys want me to review? Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, enjoy the video. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy One Star Week Foot. And we're back for another episode of... Wait, hold up. This ain't the episode. We're about to review a team of the season player. The first team of the season from the EPL is gonna be Wijnaldum. We're gonna review this team of the season Wijnaldum right now. And as an Everton fan, it hurts me a lot to say that they really bless this kid's card. This is a really nice card right here. He's 5'9". He has high, high work rates. He's right-footed with a 3-star, three 3-star three -star combo. I played 5 games in the weekend league with him. I got 1 goal and I got 2 assists. Um, and speaking of the weekend league, right now, I, I'm, I'm behind on games. It's Saturday afternoon right now, and I am 7-2. and two. Let me know in the comment section how you guys are doing. The matchmaking right now has been very difficult, actually. I don't know if it's because everybody's returning to the weekend league to try to get these team of the season cards, but I've been playing against really, really sweaty people early in the weekend league, which is very unusual. So I'm actually pretty happy with the 7-2 and two start. Um, before I go any further, once again, you guys already know what I'm about to say. If you haven't liked the video yet and you're enjoying the content, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And if you're new around here, don't be shy. Hit the subscribe button down below for me. I appreciate all you guys watching right now. Now let's move on to his stats. So he has 86 pace. Um, if you look at the stats in general, you can really play him in a bunch of different positions. I mean, there's no position you really can't play this card. Um, he's just so well-rounded. But 86 pace definitely looks very nice. His shooting stats are very decent. His passing stats are... You can even play this guy at Cam. He definitely has the passing for that. His dribbling stats are pretty decent as well. I believe if you do want to play him at Cam, you do want to put an engine, a sniper, something that's going to boost his agility up a little bit higher. His defending stats are also very viable if you do want to play him in the CDM position. His physical stats are... Very nice. 99 stamina, 95 jumping. He's just a very well-rounded card. I did play him in the CM position um, in the 4-3-3, but I also did th try him at CDM. So what's his best position? How did he play? I don't know, man. Let's jump into the gameplay. Let's find out. All right, so according to Footbin, this card's going to cost you about 480,000 coins to buy him off the market. This whole team of the season is crazy in terms of prices, and this card's no exception. Is he worth that money? I would have to say not quite. Um, let me break down the stats so you know exactly what you're getting with this card. So, um, 86 pace. He definitely has nice pace in game. It's a nice asset to your midfield to have somebody with this kind of pace. Even though he only has 87 acceleration, he does have nice acceleration coming out of the skill moves. He does have enough pace to beat the defensive line every now and then, even though it's not his main asset. He does have enough pace to track back defensively with his high, high work rates and Go forward offensively. He's just very nice with the pace. I would say his pace is an 8.5 out of 10. His shooting. I would say the two things I noticed most about his shooting were his two highest stats, unsurprisingly. So, first off, we got to talk about his attack positioning. 94 attack positioning is very good in game. Um, I just noticed he was making very dangerous runs um, pretty much everywhere on the pitch. In the midfield, he would always be open. He's always open in the attacking third in dangerous areas. And he's always in position to collect those rebound goals, those rebound deflections when other players... Uh, get tackled. He'll be there to collect the ball again to restart the play. And his attack positioning was really nice. His shot power uh, being 90 was very noticeable in game. I took a lot of shots with his card. And even though I only scored one shot, the one common denominator with all his shots was that they were like bullets coming out of his foot. His shot power is really nice. And it really sets him up to have a really nice low driven if you could get him into the right position for that shot. Overall, because of his three-star weak foot, I do have to give his shooting an 8 out of 10 because his weak foot's not going to be quite reliable in those tight situations. His passing. Oh, my. I would say his passing actually was surprising. He does have enough passing to play him at camp if that's what you want to do. I tried all kinds of passes with this card, and he was able to execute all of them pretty well. I tried nice little, like, graceful 
like nimble passes inside the box. I tried through balls. I tried long through balls, over the top through balls. He was able to execute all of them. And the one thing that separates him from a lot of the people that pass on this game at a high level is that he's able to execute those nice little soft passes in the box in tight areas where if you try to pass with an average passer in the box, a lot of the times you're going to hit the, uh, the ball directly to the defender or they'll try to hit the ball directly to the goalkeeper. And this Wijnaldum is able to pull off those little tight passes where it still goes to your attacker. And you're going to see in one of the clips, one of his assists was one of those kind of passes where he just had to put the right weight on the ball so it didn't go to a defender or a goalkeeper. He was able to do it and Florenzi scored off that effort. And that's what he brings to your team. He brings that extra class to your passing. I would say his passing is a 9 out of 10. His dribbling. I would say his dribbling was surprisingly good. I know it only says 85 agility, 86 balance on this card, but he does feel very um, responsive on the ball. He feels very evasive on the ball. He's actually very quick to turn for somebody who only has 85 agility. And when he is moving with the ball, the ball is very close to his body. He has a nice control of the ball. And he's able to execute those four-star skill moves to a high level. It's really a nice thing to have in your midfield. If you do want to play him as a secondary CDM, you can collect the ball with him from deep, just drive the ball forward with his pace, and dribble around defenders with him. Um, he's really nice to have in your midfield if you like that kind of player. I would say his dribbling is also a 9 out of 10. His defending stats. Um, his defending was surprisingly good. The one word I would use to describe his defending is disruptive. He's always in these positions to break up play. He's always in position to scoop up loose balls. He's like a magnet when it comes to loose balls. Anytime there's a loose ball around him, he's coming away with that loose ball. He has the high, high work rate, so he has the pace to track up and down the pitch and just disrupt play um, with his interceptions, his marking. His stand tackling was actually surprisingly solid because he's not that big in game. But if he's in position to put in a tackle, he's going to put that tackle in cleanly. He rarely got called for fouls. He's just like a little pest that just pesters the opponent's attackers. Overall, I would say his defending is an 8.5 out of 10. His physical. I would say I loved some things about his physical, and I also didn't quite like some things about his physical. So, let's start with the bad. He has 82 strength, and in-game, I did come up, like I said, against some big teams, right? So, I faced Hullet, Vieira, Pogba multiple times, and I find with these players, if you go head-to-head -head with him in the 50-50 challenge, he will get knocked off the ball, and that's where his strength kind of lets him down. If you're facing bigger midfielders, what you're going to need to do is just dribble around them, use his pace, use his dribbling, but do not use his strength because he doesn't quite have it in that regard. However, what I did really like about his physical was his stamina and his jumping. His stamina means even with high, high work rates, he's lasting all game. He's lasting into extra time. And if you want to play a second game on top of that, he'll last for that game too. He does not get tired. He's like Kevin Gates in that regard. He does not get tired. His stamina lasts him all game. His jumping was surprisingly good. Even though, like I said, he's kind of small in game. He's only 5'9". He, he towers above a lot of taller people and just jumps over them. It's crazy. He almost scored a headed effort that was just unfortunately saved by the goalkeeper. But offensively, defensively, he was winning things in the air that I felt like he had no right winning. And because of those two things, I would say his physical is an 8.5 out of 10. So overall, what would I rate this card? I would say he's a 9 out of 10. He's definitely a very, very good card. He's definitely a very good card to bring into your weekend league side. The reason why I say he's not worth the 480k that he's going for right now is because I know that he's going to drop in price. Hopefully, I would say to about 350, 300k uh, throughout the week. And there's, there's going to be other team of the seasons from other leagues that come out later that are going to match him in quality. So you're going to be kicking yourself if you pay that much money for this card. But that's not to say it's a, not a good card it's a very good card i would use him like a rich man's nine golden or even a poor man's prime Mateus because this guy in the cm position is one of the best cms i've used on this game and if you can't quite afford to bring in Mateus, this guy's probably the next best thing he's like Mateus, minus a little bit defending but better in the air and much better dribbling wise so yeah that's going to be my team of the season Why Now the review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. But until then, later.